So here we are driving to the Bukinabe countryside. This is a small town on the highway between Ouagadougou and the second biggest town in Burkina Faso, which is Bobo Dialoso. One of the things I have noticed about Burkina Faso is that here, more than many other countries in Africa, there seems to be a connect between the traditional architecture of the past and the modern houses being built, particularly in the rural areas, so that most of the houses mimic the same structure, uh, rectangular blocks, very little windows, but um, bungalows, uh, flat roofs with, um, with a concealed roof. And uh, so many of the buildings I've seen coming up in these rural areas, rural towns, have this, um, this design. And um, apart from the building design, there's also the question of the arrangement of, uh, of apartments within one uh, housing unit. So that there's a, a clutch of uh, 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 homes that probably belong to one family and they're all arranged around one courtyard. It's interesting that today I also drove into the, I think, environmental faculty uh, campus of the University of Ouagadougou, which is located in one of the suburbs of the city. And uh, in one of the apartments built and designed for, uh, this is a barrage, by the way, I'm driving past uh, a, a barrage, a, a, a dam, which on the right side has been down for, for irrigation purposes, but it's been taken over by weeds right now. The other side is dry. So back to my story, uh, University of uh, Ouagadougou, the, the uh, environmental campus. So one of the hutch, one of the hutches designed for student accommodation was again designed according to the traditional architecture, which, which was quite impressive. And uh, so you had these four apartments arranged around one courtyard with a meeting room, the kind of meeting room you will find right across Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, there's a roof. Uh, unfortunately, this time it's zinc, so very hot compared to the traditional roofing materials. But it is there, the same design, no walls, just some pillars holding up a roof around a low wall. So I found this very interesting because our modern concept of um, neighbors is build a wall to protect yourself against your neighbors. Our traditional concept of neighbors is put your neighbors around you to protect you against the outside world. Now it's interesting how the different philosophies of protection changes the way we live. And uh, it's important to know that uh, traditionally we start growing our communities from family outwards. Your neighbors were previously your family who got so big that they went out to build next door. But they build so close that they continue to protect you with their presence. Now, it's, uh, it's true that we cannot live like that in a modern urban area, but there's no reason why we cannot. If, for instance, we build for family, so we are building independent homes uh, that are close enough to lend support to the next person, share conveniences like meeting spaces and public facilities, so that we are turning on ourselves rather than facing the street. So we build uh, uh, homes that, uh, that um, are facing themselves rather than facing the street. That concept of uh, closeness, which starts with my family lived here, then they moved out, and then someone else moves in. Now when you move into structures that are, when you move into structures that are, that are designed for family, inevitably you become family. And I think this is one interesting
concept of, uh, of architecture that helps to uh, merge our philosophy of life with our society, which are, with, uh, with the way we live. So the way we build is the way we are acculturated to think. So when we build with uh, neighbors as family, neighbors actually become family. But if we build with neighbors as enemies to be protected against, inevitably that works out the same as well. So we're back on the highway to Bobo Diallo, so the town with a name and a surname. It's interesting how Burkina Faso, the country with a, a name and a surname, births these double-jointed towns, Bobo Diallo. So it's also interesting how when you get into the towns, the indigenes stop calling themselves by their surname and first name. To many Burkina Bay, they are living in Faso or Burkina. And I've also heard, I've not been to Bobo yet, but people have been referring to this town as Bobo. See you in Bobo.